So I get a lot of questions, Armin, how have you avoided traffic violations all these years? Well, you are about to find out. Full disclosure, I'm a former police officer. Years ago though, 1997 to 2003. So I'm coming at this from law enforcement perspective. 100% support law enforcement out there. I have been in the public safety law enforcement consulting world. run my license and all that stuff make sure I'm good so at that point the officer has discretion and they'll either run my plate run my license anything else or they won't even do any of that it's really up to them their call they're in charge of the whole stop traffic stop they are in charge of everything and I have driven away without a ticket after being released by the officer of course it all has to do with the rapport you build from the first time you open your mouth for me I'm always polite professional. I have a sense of professional courtesy. I understand how it goes. Like I said, I even though I wasn't a cop for, for the last 15 plus years, I still was in that industry. So I still was plugged in with, uh, with, that, with that community. So that being said, there you go. I'm not saying that I'll never get a ticket, but because of my demeanor and my conversations with the uh, officer that stops me on a traffic stop they've exercised some discretion plain and simple now for those of you well Armin what about for those out here that are not former police officers or current police officers well, the law is the law you break it expect to get con expect the you know deal with the consequences just don't get stopped in the first place and how I don't get stopped that often in the first place because people say man with a car like that and how you drive in the past and now today with this car, how do you not get stopped? And I, my short answer is, well, I know when and where to speed. Who did I say that? <laughs> I know when and where to drive in a spirited manner. And what does that mean exactly? Two basic things. One, I check my blind spots. Number two, I look ahead, like 10, 15 seconds ahead or as far as I can, my eye can see looking for a speed trap. So let's go back to number one. Number one, I look for blind spots. There are two blind spots that I am always checking. I'm always checking over my left shoulder and over my right shoulder. Predominantly, I use the rear view mirror to do that. As you probably have noticed, I'm always scanning my mirror. If you look back at all my other videos where I'm driving like this, I am scanning my video, my, I'm scanning the mirror, the rearview mirror, all the time. And I'm looking for police vehicles, basically, and just looking for police vehicles, unmarked or marked otherwise. I also check over my right, my uh, passenger side blind spot using the passenger uh, side view mirror. So that's number one, I look for my blind spots and look through them. I try and be aware of who's behind me, how they're driving behind me. And uh, I, I'm always on the lookout. 
Number two, I look ahead. I try to envision where that next speed trap will be, whether it's a speed camera, which are harder to see, to be honest, um, or what I think could be a potential speed trap. And how do I determine a speed trap? Well, speed trap, radar trap, LIDAR trap, whatever it may be. I was radar certified way back in the day. I think today everybody, all the cops use LIDAR, which is laser based. I'm not LIDAR certified, so I'm not gonna talk about it. But I will talk about some of the basics. What I learned in radar school is to have a solid court case from the officer's perspective, you wanna be able to uh, articulate how open the roadway was, therefore uh, providing a clear line of sight, a very clear line of sight, no obstructions, and how I was clearly able to observe the driver's behavior compared to other cars as well. Whether they're weaving in and out as they were approaching my radar spot or if they were accelerating past other cars. So I, yes, I'm thinking about all this, but since I've been doing it so long and often, it's, been, it's so second nature for me to be on the lookout for it. Here's a great example right here. You got this wide open roadway. And if you look to the left here, you can park there as a cruiser, even here on the right, park there, park your cruiser there as a cop and run radar all day. Cause this is a wide open area. It's so easy to run, to drive fast here if you wanted to. I don't recommend it, of course. Follow the speed limit, follow the posted speed limit guys. Obey the law. But just saying that that's a prime location, in my opinion. If I were to run radar, I'd just park my cruiser there. Here's another one right here. This roadway, that's perfect. Um, the only problem is it's coming out of a residential area, so you'll get made, <laughs> probably, because you're paying attention to cars coming out of that residential area. Plus, those cars coming out of that residential area will probably get in your way. So, I will try and spot what I think could be a potential radar uh, trap. And that's it. And I always look at, if it's an op wide open highway and with a good sized median for cops to park on, yeah, that could be a, a speed trap. Now that is not applicable to every roadway, guys. There's so many factors to consider, but that's the general premise I personally use, that I personally use to make myself more aware as a, uh, of potential speed traps. If you know the roadways, like I do around my DC metro area, you should be start learning and be more aware of where these speed traps are popping up or are located, okay? And just be prepared before you even get there, just watch your speed. Drive the speed limit. That's my official statement on that. <laughs> However, not everybody does. I like to stay within 10 miles of the per hour of the speed limit, of the posted speed limit, just to be safe. Um, people seem to get stopped, and when I talk to friends, oh, I got stopped by the police, I was, I said, how fast were you going? Oh, it's like you're 15, 20 over. I said, well, of course you're probably going to get stopped. That's pretty quick in some, in a lot of roadways. And there you have it. Those are some of my basic mindsets when it comes to avoiding tickets. Number one, observing my blind spots behind me. Number two, observing potential speed traps before I get to it in front of me. And of course, watching your speed if you're just cruising around. Now, if you're racing, I can't help you there. <laughs> Unless you are in Mexico, you're pretty much at risk. You'll get caught, you'll get caught. One way or another, somebody report you, write your tag down, or there'll be a camera. So keep that in mind. Unless you go to Mexico, we all know what that means. Anyway, I hope this video was fun. I will probably do another video based uh, about, uh, you know, dealing with law enforcement and traffic and speeding, maybe another one or two videos. Let me know what you think. Is there anything you'd like to know from a former police officer's perspective? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you and we can talk. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.